we have a lot of questions we can ask them, but it shouldn't be the coaches asking all the questions. So again, be thinking about stuff you guys can ask them, okay? Yes, coach? We're gonna say pretty silent crowd there. I'll answer on behalf of everyone. Yes, coach. Outstanding, <laughs> love it. Here comes the great Ethan Leakes is jumping on. Kenji, turn on your camera. You in there, Kenji? Kenji, it's a rule in our in our chats. You have to have your there camera. There he is. On. Good job. And he's great got Kenji. the muscle shirt on, too. Look at that. I love uh, the muscle shirt. Guns out, guns out. <laughs> so again, guys, it is going to be our last session. You know, we had talked about this before. Uh, you know, there's a chance we may schedule one for next week, but as of right now, you know, I'm gonna say no. Um, you know, we do have a couple of potentials, but, uh, but we had talked about before taking this through the end of, end of May. Uh, you guys have had a, a great opportunity. Hopefully you guys, um, you know, when you reflect back on the people we've had a chance to talk to, you know, Rob Pinnell, Austin Pafani, Brett Manny, uh, Mike Bender, Coach Myers, um, you know, these are great guys. And hopefully you guys, you know, were able to take some, some you know, glean some advice and guidance from them over the course of uh, this last month. Um, not many teams are staying connected and doing these kinds of things. So, you know, again, guys, you know, take advantage of the situation. You know, when we have professional players on the line, ask them questions. You know, if you're curious, ask away. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, do we have Kevin on yet? Doesn't look like it. Not yet. He's not coming. Yet, not yet. Hey, oh, put your video on, brother. I want to see my goalies. Camera on. I want to see all my goalies. Camera hey, on. Lincoln, there you are. There's my goalies. I want to see my goalies. Owen Fainel, camera on. Nick. Nick's in the house tonight. We got everybody. Hey, nice, Kelly, guys. text Chase and ask him if he's joining us. Text Nick, Thanks, too. Oh. How many guys we got on right now? 20 so far. We're getting All right. It. Getting a big turnout. That's good. What's up, E? What's up, Matt Scott? Let's see all you guys. All right, guys. When, when, after we, hit, well, actually, what I want you guys to do is you're going to click on this, on the top of the screen there, speaker view. And that way, whichever coach or whoever is talking or asking a question, they're going to be big on the screen, okay? Keep your cameras on the whole time so we don't have to remind you guys. Okay, keep your cameras on the whole time. Make sure you're visible. Someone text uh, Colin Winfield real quick. Get him on here. Okay, there's Mr. Bender. All right, so I'm going to text Coach Kevin. And Liam. Liam. What's up, Liam? He's getting on. What's that? Come on. Liam said he's getting on. Yep. All right, we got Liam. <laughs> see there. We see Liam and all that flow. Hey, Coach Rob, what's like that 15-minute thing you always talk about? What is 15 minutes something or something? Ah, not you, that's he's, Vince he's, Lombardi, he's, brother. I know it is. You want that right on time. You're 15 minutes late. That's right. That's right, Coach. That's right. We need a little Yoda action in here, too. A little Yoda, right, so you get, Yoda quotes. You guys are going <laughs> to click speaker view, okay? Make sure you keep yourselves <laughs> muted until you answer a question. Yes. Got it, guys? Yes, Coach. Awesome. I'll speak for the masses. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. You're a rock star. Oh, I'm Love the it. best. You know. What's up, Mr. Shaner? I see you in the house. Nice to see Bren. Ellie Wetmore, watch your camera off. You get thrown out of the house that way. <laughs> hey, there he is. Hey, guys, I want to introduce... Kevin Crowley is in the house, guys. So everybody click yourselves to speaker view real quick. And uh, I just want to briefly, uh, Kevin, I want to introduce you to our team. This is the South Parkland Youth Association, fifth and sixth grade team. Um, this team was heavily touted here to be one of the best to come through the Lehigh Valley in ages. I mean, it's it was loaded and it was unfortunate the season got robbed from us, just like it was unfortunate it got robbed from you. Guys, yeah. I want to introduce you a little bit about Kevin. Um, Kevin grew up in British Columbia. He then attended Stony Brook University, guys. He was a two-time first-team All-American, the D1 
midfielder uh, overall or of the year. He was the USILA player of the year. He led Team Canada to the World Championships where he was voted MVP. He was the only player to be selected first overall by the MLL, NLL, and WLA. He, was, he played for the Lizards. He's a captain of the Wings, the Philadelphia Wings, and he was recently traded to the Philly Barrage. So he's a Philly boy now. Philly true yeah. and true. <laughs> and he started Fusion Lacrosse, Team 21 Lacrosse, and Penlax All-Stars Box Lacrosse. He's the head coach of the Shipley Middle School lacrosse team, the assistant varsity coach. So did I leave anything out there, coach? Uh, I think that was a pretty exhaustive list there. I appreciate that. Ah, dude. And guys, lastly, his nickname is the Big Cat. So <laughs> he'll talk to you guys all about that. Um, so, Kevin, I know, like, Coach Kevin Kelly over here will have a list of – and a litany of questions for you. Yep, there's his <laughs> notepad. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids have been instructed to um, prepare some questions for you. Cool. But before we let them go at it, first of all, thank you for your time. I know you're a busy guy and you're doing a lot. And yeah. I just want to uh, give the opportunity to tell the kids a little bit about your story, your journey, what makes – the big cat per how you get, go about what you do and um, some words of wisdom before we let these guys at you. Yeah. So I grew up in uh, just outside Vancouver, British Columbia, which is just two hour drive from Seattle. So the West coast there, um, I grew up playing box across initially. So all we did in the summer was play, um, you know, the, when you're young, you got to play on the outdoor rinks in the summer. Um, and then you get older, you can move inside. But, you know, I played hockey in the winter and box across in the summer as so many Canadians before me. Um, and it was cool because they melted the ice in the, uh, in the hockey rink. So then you played lacrosse there in the summer. So uh, every hometown, every town had a rink. And, you know, that's how I grew up playing. And I wasn't introduced to field lacrosse uh, until I was probably about nine or ten years old. And... Uh, and we were we had no idea what we were doing. There'd been a couple Canadian guys who had uh, who'd gone to the United States to play. They come back and uh, teach us how to play the game or some variation of it. It wasn't uh, wasn't much different than box across being played on an open field. Um, but I was able to get a scholarship to Stony Brook University. Uh, my I went to university in Canada. Uh, a year after I graduated high school. And then I got, I transferred essentially down to Stony Brook after my buddy got recruited there and said, Hey, there's this guy up in Canada. You got to see him. So I had to send my DVD. This is how old I am in the lacrosse world. I send my DVD. <laughs> Rob, that's actually pretty young because he did VHS or A-track or something. <laughs> yeah, that gets true. But nowadays you just send a YouTube link, obviously, and you're, laughing right we had to get the address you had to send a dvd um and i got recruited had four good years at stony brook went first overall to a mll team that's now defunct the hamilton nationals um and also that so after my hamilton nationals stint i got drafted by the philadelphia wings and i've been living in philadelphia now for the past seven years going on eight years um on and off the first three but you know, full time the past five years. So that's a little bit of my story and how I ended up here and meeting uh, meeting the sensei over here uh, through our Penlax All Stars team, and it's been a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. So we're gonna open it up to some questions from the kids. I know uh, a bunch of these guys have some questions. Um, Bryson is always Johnny on the spot. This guy's a natural lefty and he's a gunner. We got a couple amazing lefties on this team between Bryson and Johnny, and there's a couple others, but nice. yeah, Bry Bryson's a raw talent, this little guy. So Bryson will let you go here. Go ahead, Bryson. Let's have it. Um, how do you adjust to a uh, new team and new players? Yeah, that's a good, uh, a good question. It's tougher when you're a younger player and you don't know as many players in the league. Um, 
but as you get older, you you probably know at least half the roster, right? So it's always an excitement. There's always a nervousness when you uh, when you go into a new locker room and you have your bag, you get your new equipment bag it's slung over your shoulder, and you get to meet all these new faces. Um, getting to play with them, you know, the first practice, you're kind of feeling out the spacing and what you know what different players bring to the table. What's their you know, favorite looks to make where, and, and the most important thing is having a dialogue an open conversation with the new guys, because, you know, if you keep your mouth shut and don't tell me what you want and I'm doing the same thing, then we're just going to butt heads on the field. So my rule is talk about every little detail, you know, especially if my midi lines rolling out there, I want to know what these guys want to dodge from. I want to know what hand they can go to and where they want me to be. And I think that's all about being a good teammate. Awesome. Awesome. Question. Great question, Bryson. Bailey Thank Wentmore's you. got a question for you, buddy. You knew that was coming, right? <laughs> probably, probably written by Ron. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why would you say such a <laughs> No, I mean, you wrote, you wrote the one for Trevor. What the heck? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Play nice, coaches. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Bailey. <laughs> um. So, how did you prepare for like the your three hundredth goal, where you had to catch it behind your back? Yeah, that's a uh, that goes back a long, long time ago when I was. Uh, <clears throat> and this is that's a good question because it, you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, that was luck" or whatever. But there is a guy named Ken McDonald. He was my uncle's uh, best friend, and he saw me walking down the street one day, and. Uh, pulled the car over to the side. I had my lacrosse stick and he pops open his trunk and pulls out his lacrosse stick. And, you know, he starts having a catch with me. And I was like, Oh, you just carry it around with you. He's like, yeah, you never know when you want to hit the wall or, you know, have a catch with someone. So I thought that was funny. And he did this. He's like, watch this, throw it at me. And then he did a behind the back catch. And he's like, you should work on this. You'll never know when you're going to use it. And I was probably seven years old, eight years old when he said that. So just for fun, I, I do that, you know, I bounce the ball against the wall, like ground, wall, and then work on catching it behind the back. I've done that for fun with all the kids I coach. Um, and then just in that circumstance, for whatever reason, like the timing was just perfect. And it just, you know, in my brain, for some reason, I wanted to catch that behind the back. So, yes, there was luck to it, but it wasn't like, you know, it was the first time I've ever caught it behind my head. Uh, that's amazing. So for you guys that aren't aware of, of this catch, you guys have to look it up on YouTube. This was an ESPN highlight. It was at the Wings game. Um, and I know it, it couldn't have been going through your mind that I'm going to score my 300th goal like this. Yeah. But this was a benchmark goal in a ridiculous catch, diving down through the hole behind his head, and he buries this thing. It was the most surreal thing I've ever seen in person. So, guys, if you have not seen that catch that he's talking about, you have to look it up on YouTube. It's, it's amazing. So, that's, pretty, that's awesome. It was pretty funny, too, because the U.S. lacrosse convention was in town, and I was hanging out after the game with uh, the Gate brothers, Paul and Gary. Yeah. And they were like – Gary was like, yeah, I didn't see it. I was grabbing a beer or whatever. But Paul was like, yeah, I saw it. We've never done anything like that. So, those guys were uh, West Coast – British Columbians like myself so I watched them growing up they were my idols so for them to say like that was something we've never done in the game of lacrosse that was probably the biggest compliment I've ever received that's amazing that's amazing I saw Ryan Bender had a question there so go ahead Ryan are you ever going to go over to the PLL Ooh. that's a good question uh I had an offer from them in the first place to go over there but uh my decision making was um, I liked, I had set up a deal with, I'm sure you guys heard that they paid more money to their players. I actually had like a competitive offer from the MLL, the Charlotte Hounds at the time uh, with a marketing deal in place. So I would have played in Charlotte um, and done appearances for them, like ran camps and clinics and would have made, you know, the equivalent. Um, I was a New Balance athlete at the time. So New Balance is uh, heavily involved with the MLL. It, my contract was up. So my 
anticipation was if I stuck with the MLL and stayed loyal to this league and to the brand that sponsored me, that they would re-up my contract. So uh, there was a couple factors, and that would have pushed it, you know, to making more money than what I would have made in the PLL. Um, so there's a little uh, thing on the finance side. Um, the other thing for me was I had a great experience in the MLL. I know that's not the case for a lot of guys. You know, I pay, I had, at the time, I guess I had played, what are, what are we out now? Eight, eight years in the MLL. I was MVP of the league, offensive player of the league, MLL all-star game, MLL all-star game MVP. So I felt, and they've always been good to me. So I wasn't just going to jump ship uh, when a new offer came. Uh, it was more important to me to stay loyal to a league that's been good to me for seven years. So that was my, will I jump over? Well, we'll see how negotiations go this time around with the Philadelphia Barrage. But, you know, it's uh, – I'm not sure what the future holds. And I'm sure Paul, if I had a call, uh, combo with him, would be happy to have me back. But as it stands, I'm happy with the MLL and the way things have gone. You know, now I'm in Philly full time. So, can't beat that, right? Good you got question. a couple other guys that came over, right, with Paul Rabel and you got Austin Fani and – a couple of the guys that you know that came over from the Lizards, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't blame those guys. I didn't even play with them because I was with the Charlotte that just folded. So the Whip Snakes team was more my teammates, like Mike Chan and Chuck, Rambo, uh, Fields. Like a lot of those players were on my Charlotte team. So I was pumped for them. I have no ill feelings towards the PLL. Like I love watching the games. I'll have an MLL game. I'll turn it on in my afternoon nap, you know, try to get some sleep and watch the game. So – I'm happy for those guys. They're younger guys. You know, they got in uh, in a social media world. They have, you know, and you're worried about your branding and everything like that. They're, I think uh, they're in a good spot with the PLL right now. And, you know, obviously you see everything the PLL does behind the scenes on the field. So they're in a good spot. Power off. That's awesome. Who's next, guys? Who's got another question? I got Matt Kelly. Matt Kelly. Go ahead, Matt Kelly. This is Coach Kelly's son, as you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just trying to spot which QB is on here. <laughs> he's got some kind of funky background, I'm sure. Yeah, he's in the bottom wearing a Wings jersey, of course. Hey, he's got your jersey on there, Coach. All right. Matt, ask the question, bud. What was it like getting traded to the Wings? That was a you know big relief, and I was uh, – so I had – I was holding out from New England because the same owners that were in Philadelphia were in New England. You guys are getting a real behind the scenes here, by the way. Like, <laughs> from the, you know, I don't know if you watched the last dance. Uh, I'll try to remember. I'll get to your question in a second. But, you know, it, talking about the GM and how much the GM was, you know, they say they could have done it another year, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so the same organization that was with the Wings prior, uh, prior to when they left was in New England. And I had just fought with them for eight seasons on, you know, contracts and trying to get a fair market deal for myself. So eventually I said, you know what? Enough's enough. I'm holding out from the Black Wolves. You're going to pay me what I'm worth or I'm out of here. So three games go by. And, you know, at this point, I'm like, they're going to get rid of me. I have no idea where. I could be in Rochester. I could be in Buffalo. You know, it could be in Saskatchewan. Um, but, uh you know, so I got that phone call from the GM and I'm looking at my phone and I'm on my way to practice, Penlax practice actually, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh boy, oh boy, this is going to be intense. Like, so nervous. And then he's like, hey, we got ready. We traded you and my, you know, my heart sunk. I was kind of like, where am I going? It's not going to be Philadelphia, no chance. He's like, well, we got two first rounders for you. You're going back home to Philly. And I was like, it was the most relief I've felt in a long time because it was such a stressful process being there. You know, when the Black Wolves teammates are yelling at you, like, where are you, man? Are you coming back? Like, sign, let's go. So, yeah, relieving. And, you know, the first game back, being out there, standing in front of all the fans, you know, and a lot of faces I knew, there's no better feeling. It really isn't. It was great. So, to put that in perspective, you were drafted first overall by three field lacrosse teams, then by the NLL, or no, I'm sorry, by three professional teams. Then they traded 
the Wings traded two first-round picks for you. So that's five first-round picks. And the Barrage <laughs> traded the first overall pick for you. So you've essentially been drafted number one overall six times. I like that math. I like your math. I don't know if there's any credit to it, but uh, it sounds good to me. I think that needs to go on your bio, you know, just say it. You, you know what? The 31 years old now, there's gonna, you're going to have a lot of jerseys in your closet, you know. <laughs> they call me a suitcase now. Hey, if you need a marketing manager, just say the word. All right. All right. <laughs> so who's next, guys? I know Matt Scott had his hand up. So you got Matt Kelly. Now we're on Matt Scott. What made you pick lacrosse over hockey? Another good question. Uh, my life kind of – my grandpa played lacrosse. My uncle played lacrosse. My dad didn't. And it's kind of funny because I know it's not such a generational thing on the East Coast yet where, you know, your grandpa plays. Um, especially because I'm 31. He's he's passed away in 2015. But um, it kind of filtered my life that way, you know, where you're going – my uncle was a brine rep too. So that was like, I had the gear. Hockey was a more expensive sport. I had a bad high ankle sprain that made skating very tough for me. And then it was like, well, lacrosse is kind of, you know, taken over and, and, you know, people are like, Oh, wouldn't you rather be, you know, of stuck with hockey? Look at how much money they made. And I'm like, I don't know if I would have put the work in, that I did because I love lacrosse so much. And I obviously didn't love hockey as much as that. So, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things was I played lacrosse every night with my uh, neighbors across the street till our moms called us in for dinner. Uh, and I was getting better at the sport and I was having fun with it. So I didn't even know it wasn't ever a grind for me. And I think that's where I fell in love with it. So, you know, I don't think I would have, if I had a pursued hockey made it to the level I did in lacrosse. So, I got a weird, weird request here before we go to the next kid. Um, it's not a kid request. Uh, Bailey's mom has a question for you. So where are you, Jen? Are you on camera? Where are you? There she is. Technical difficulties. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's not a surprise. <laughs> so my question is, what do you like better, box or field? Playing versus watching, too. Um, definitely playing box lacrosse. It's just so much more intense. You know, when you have a closed stadium, it feels like the fans are right on top of you. It's a lot louder. Um, sometimes playing field in the summer, as you guys know, can be real hot. And when you're going down to Florida and playing on a turf field in Florida, it's almost unbearable. So, you know, and especially all the light skinned, uh, you know, the fair skinned <laughs> friends just getting smoked out there you know uh so the sunscreen you have to put on i don't know box lacrosse just says much more intense and i like watching it better too uh for the same reasons i sat you know when the wings had their home opener last year i was still in new england but i was holding out i sat in the crowd you know i had my hat hang hung low over my head but you know i enjoyed watching that game the the production level with the you know, the whole graphics on the field before the game. And, you know, it was intense, man. I was like, you know, I I wish the sport took off further just because it's such a, a fan-friendly sport. And, you know, someday I think it will. Well, just keep playing that long. <laughs> yeah. we'll Thank see. you. Yeah, of course. So, all right. Johnny has not asked a question yet. So I know Johnny G. Here is another natural lefty. This guy is a sniper. He's, we actually call him a dog because this kid will run until his legs fall off. He doesn't stop for anything. This kid's a beast. We got to get him down there to Penlax, I'm telling you. So yeah. go ahead, Johnny. Uh, what do you focus on the most uh, when you're doing your middle school practices? What do I focus on the most? Um, I think physical literacy is a large part of my practices. So meaning – like, I want you to learn how to move on the field and develop your athleticism. Uh, so we'll always start with, like, a ladder drills or cone work just to understand that, you know, proprioception of where your body is around. And I think, you know, middle schoolers could all benefit from that sort of training. Um, it really depends on the level of the team. So my Shipley middle schoolers, uh, 
the talent level, there's a discrepancy. So I have other coaches. I'll take my top half of the talent and I'll, we'll work on one thing. And then we'll, with our lower half, we'll, we'll make sure they're doing the stick work, right? Because, you know, we don't want drill killers. It hurts the whole team. Obviously, you guys know what a drill killer is, right? Someone who can't, you know, catch or pass the ball. So there has to be a certain proficiency in your stick work so that you can, you know, contribute to the team fully. And, uh, yeah, I guess that physical literacy and, you know, separating the skill levels. Um, and then it, and then if you're up, if your top talent is ready for, you know, if they've got the fundamentals down, then you can start talking about, you know, dodge varieties, getting outside just the, you know, the split or the roll and then start comboing rolls. Maybe it's a face to a face to a split or something. So, you know, it gets a little more advanced from there, but I think the fundamentals, you got to have a level of athleticism or be developing a level of athleticism and the stick work's got to be there. And then, you know, we can in the high school ranks really start implementing some stuff that, you know, will take your game that much, that much further. Awesome. All right. Who else has a question here, guys? Because I know uh, Coach Kevin is is biting at the bit here to get on. So any other yeah, questions wait, wait, wait. before we let Coach Kelly uh, let the barrage go? I was just going to ask one here, Rob. There's the pun. <laughs> There's the pun. Nobody caught it. All right. Yeah, Coach Kevin, it. you're up for at least one until anybody thinks of something else. No, thanks, Rob. Uh, thanks, Kev. Um, you know, the lacrosse community is a pretty small community, but I was curious – you know, when you think back over the course of your career or over the course of your involvement in lacrosse, you know, who do you, you know, who's the person that you most admire when it comes to, uh, to the sport or to that community? And at the same time, you know, who's the one player that maybe you enjoyed either playing with or against the most? Yeah, so, you know, immediately coming to mind in 2009. So the WLA, for you guys who don't know, is a Western Lacrosse Association. I was drafted first to that league. So that my team's called the New Westminster Salmon Bellies. Um, unfortunately, can't. it's a summer league, but they canceled the season this year because of COVID. But it, we played in the national championship, the Man Cup. It's the East Coast versus the West Coast. The best teams from each. It's all the pro guys in NLL play in this league, too. Um, in the summer so I played against a guy named Dan Dawson who uh, is a box lacrosse player he played on Team Canada field in 2010 but uh, he's uh, I'm sorry one second I got, I'm in the parking lot right now <laughs> this guy was wondering what I was doing in here <laughs> what's going on man um, yeah, so don't Dan get arrested lost. for loitering <laughs> so we lost in game seven we lost uh, in the man cup final is if you're growing up in Canada, you know what the Man Cup is. It's it's like your yeah. Super Bowl essentially. Um, we lost in Game Seven, but uh, in the so that's 2009, 2010. Dan Dawson, who you know was a unreal box across player, someone I looked up to growing up. He came up to me at the World Games tryouts for Team Canada and was like, "Hey Crowley, what a series you had, man! You were lights out." Um, and that meant so much to me, right, to be recognized by a player that good. And then, so when I got drafted to the Philadelphia Wings, I got the opportunity to play with Dan, uh, Dan Dawson and Brody Merrill. So, you know, that was very cool. I learned a ton from them uh, about leadership, about, you know, the work ethic you need to put in outside of, uh, you know, when the team gets together on the weekend. So Dan Dawson would probably be my, my guy, I'd say. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Who's got another question, guys? If you don't have one, I got like two loaded here. Is that Chase? Chase, you got a question? Go ahead, Chase. You're up, buddy. What other sports do you like kind of do on your off season? <laughs> you have an off season. <laughs> yeah, I finally have an off season. I've been golfing as much as I can lately. Um, you know, I was thought you were gonna ask what's my favorite sport to I play basketball, but I love watching basketball. I'm a big Sixers fan. If I can ever go to those games, I'm there. Uh, you know, I wish Ben Simmons would shoot a three-pointer. I hope he's working <laughs> on it this offseason. Um, but, yeah, I, I enjoy playing basketball, shooting hoops with my friends. And golf's kind of been the sport lately. That's, you know, I used to golf when I was real young. And then, you know, with all the sports I've been in, it was tough to uh, get back into it. But now I'm uh, – 
you know, get to swing the clubs again. It's good. Awesome. Now, I know we've had you for half an hour, and I know that you uh, squeezed this into your schedule. So we want to wrap up the last couple questions and, and not take too much of your time. Um, so I know I had a question. I don't know. If, actually, I've heard the answer a couple because I on a bunch of your chats, but the name, the big cat. Come on, tell the kids the story about the nickname, the big cat. And I mean, and you have a pretty big cat living with you right now too. So yeah, well, that was finally fostering the cat I have right now. Is uh, if any of the parents are listening in the background, if you want a new cat, I got one for you. Um, <laughs> I had, that was on brand for me because I've been using the big cat. Uh, what's up, man? I'm on a Zoom here. Oh, okay, cool. What are you doing here? What? <laughs> I was, but then Dave left, wanted to lock up. Oh, really? Yeah, we're good. Sorry, a little intermission there. The big cat. So in 2010, uh, 2010, Chris Sanderson, who was our goaltender at, in Manchester at the World Games, uh, we lost the gold medal game, but Chris Sanderson skipped uh, chemotherapy uh, to play for us in goal. He was our starting goalie. Um, unreal person but I was a young guy on the team I was the youngest guy on that team and he had to come up with nicknames for everyone in the locker room and you know for some reason I was I was a junior in college so I was a little leaner probably and I guess he just based on my build and the fact that he never saw me when uh because I was napping all the time <laughs> it just kind of stuck with big cat and hmm. it's been fun for me to like brand around you know and like have a nickname like that that people it's weird for people to when they say Kevin to me now. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, what's up? You know, I'm used to people <laughs> calling me Big Cat or Crowley or whatever. So that's the story awesome. behind that. Are there any other kids before we turn this over to Coach Kevin Kelly to wrap <laughs> up with his onslaught? Anybody else have a question? Uh, Coach Chris does. Coach Chris has one. Uh, Kevin, hey, uh, we got two goalies on with us here today. And uh, they're really never the topic of conversation. Any advice for our goalies as they uh, develop up through the middle school ranks? I don't know if you work with them directly, but any advice would be helpful for our, our two guys here. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I, I'll say my piece, but there's so much, you know, this is the best part about this thing, whole, uh, you know, off season for everyone right now is the amount of uh, knowledge that's online now. And um, absolutely. I'll work on goalies and, you know, you go back to footwork and it's the same for, I know you guys of your, you asked about the middle school question earlier, like that's just important for goalies as it is defensive players. And it's just important for offensive players as, you know, um, anyone. So, you know, making sure your footwork's on, I always you know, step into the ball. I can, you know, if I know one thing about the sport, you better get the center of your cage over top of that ball and challenge that ball. Um, and that's the easiest thing for me as a, you know, as a shooter to see, because if I know you're not doing that, I'm bouncing it in the corner every single time until you start stepping to the ball. So, you know, my favorite drill to do is have the goalie line up on one pipe and I shoot the ball to the opposite side of the pipe and they have to get across the whole cage of the, the whole six feet of the goal to get to that ball or it's going in the net. And that's one of my favorite, just to really hammer home that, uh, that step and if they're not there Great. I score nice thank you coach Chris did you write that down buddy no I did not write that down coach Chris is our goalie coach so I love it we got Owen down in the corner we got Lincoln or our two goalies on with us so we're always looking for new stuff for them yeah was that new to you or is that some one that was in the coach Vegas? Kevin coach Kevin has already touched on that drill we've, we've tried it in practice a couple times so that, that has helped it does it does help with their footwork and quickness that's for sure Good. All right, well, speaking of Coach Kevin, all right, Coach Kevin. <laughs> Every week he, he picks on me here, Kevin, I tell you. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe because you have all your awards that you've won since middle school in the back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's actually fantasy football. It's fantasy football. <laughs> Makes more sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, best cheesesteak in Philly. Best cheesesteak. Oh. Tony Luke's. I mean, Tony Luke's is pretty good. Uh, 
I catch a lot of heat for saying this, and it's because I don't eat a lot of cheesesteaks. I mean, I don't see them as like a delicacy. I get like, you know, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. why people eat them, but uh, I don't go out of my way for a cheesesteak. But if I were, I'd say, uh, uh, oh, man, is it Jim's on South Street there? I've had that a couple times. That's oh, probably I mean, my favorite. Jim's on South. I'll throw Sleep that one down. Not. Nice. I think that's different than the one we got from Rob Pinnell. Because Rob was on here a couple weeks ago. I'm trying Who's to remember that? which one. Remember He's Rob Prince Pinnell? of Steaks. Prince of Steaks. That's what Prince it was. of Steaks. Where's and, that? Uh, I think, I don't remember. Chris, do you remember where that was? Uh, I'm not sure where he said it was, but I have definitely heard of that one. And then he said the Reading Terminal Market with a uh, – both Rob the, and Rob. Oh, yeah. yeah Those yeah, poor yeah. broccoli Rob. We yeah, hit exactly Geno's and Pat's, right of course. Oh. If you line them up, if you line five cheesesteak places up the same order, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell, like, which one belongs to which. So, <laughs> probably I'm not. So, we're in the cheesesteak category. You got Cheese Whiz or, or, or Provolone? What do you want? <laughs> Whiz or without? Whiz Whiz. All right. Whit. So, does anybody else have any questions before we – uh? Let Coach out of here. Hey, Actually, guys, one so, more question. One more question. Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry. So, again, greatest sports moment, Kevin. So, you've been obviously in a lot of different championships, played in a lot of different leagues. You know, if you, as you reflect back over the course of your career, um, you know, even at the youth ranks and so forth, what's the greatest sports moment for you? 2014 World Games uh, hosted by the United States. where They were in Denver that year. Um, my uh, – so I had, like, prepared like crazy leading up to it. I had a sports psychologist. I had a workout plan. I had a – you know, I had a nutrition plan. Like, I was ready to go for the World Games. And it was funny because the first, like, round-robin game is for Team Canada. I wasn't really playing, and it was hard for me because I wanted to be – you know, I trained for this. Like, put me out there. And what was happening was the coach was, you know, essentially resting me for the games that mattered because, you know, Japan and uh, Germany, I think we played that year. Uh, Australia, they don't offer up much competition, so there's no point in burning my legs out. But, you know, I was ready. I was gung-ho, raring to go. So I didn't play much um, until the final game. And I had four of the first uh, five goals, and I ended up with five goals in the – eight five win for team Canada over the United States. And that was a big one for me because my grandpa was very sick and uh, we didn't even know, like my, my grandma was worried if he would even be able to attend the world games because he had cancer. Um, but he was able to be there and see me win a, a world title and score five goals in that game. And, you know, that was definitely my that's most special awesome. moment. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks Kevin. That's amazing. All right. So, Kevin, lastly, before we let you out of here, yeah, these kids missed their season and they're hanging on the edge waiting for hopefully a club season. Now, not all these kids are playing club, but just to shout it out there, guys. Club opportunities. We, we've met the director of Headstrong. We've met the director of uh, uh, a number of different clubs so far, guys. Um, we talked to Brett Manny, but Coach Kevin here has – Fusion Lacrosse, you've got Team 21, and those of you that are big fans of box lacrosse, you've got Penlax All-Stars, um, which we have a number of the kids on this team that are playing for. You know, Colin's on here too. Colin, I don't know if Colin chimed in or not. But going into this summer, what kind of words of advice do you have for these guys since they missed this season, how to move forward, how important keeping that stick in their hands is, and what the next step should be for these guys. And then we'll let you out of that parking lot before you get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, first thing is it's a lesson in learning to, you know, worry about the things you can control and, you know, letting go the things you can't control. And obviously this is out of everyone's control right now in terms of, you know, this is the situation we're in, you know, how do we make the most of it? Not, you know, it's okay to dwell on it. It's, it sucks. It sucks for everyone, but you know, there's going to be times in a game where things aren't going your way. Right. And is it like, no, this sucks. Like, are you going to pout on the sideline or are you going to use it as an opportunity? Right. You learn from 
you know, the past and then you move on and you're better in the future for it. So for in terms of what you guys are doing, um, it's the same thing as I'm doing, man. I'm training, I'm working out harder than I have because, you know, we usually in lacrosse world, you have a game every weekend. So you play Saturday, you're sore Sunday, Monday's a recovery day, Tuesday you lift, Wednesday you lift, Thursday is light, Friday you're in practicing, and Saturday you play. It's rinse, repeat. So, you know, now you have an opportunity to train harder than you've ever had because you don't have any games. You're not getting that, you know, that soreness, that mileage on your body. So that's definitely one thing, training. Um, wall ball, I've been doing – I don't think I've done so many wall ball because I'm doing all these drills for people on Zooms and – you know, making all these videos. So my sticks in my hand all the time. And I'm showing like, I'm a righty Canadian guy, strong handed guy. Right. But I'm like, if I'm going to tell these kids what they need to do, which is work on both hands. And if I'm going to show it, then I'm going to use my left hand. So my left hand's gotten better. And of course, watching film, you know, going over the past season for me and seeing my own game and, and, you know, being a student of the game, learning what I can from other players' mistakes, not just my own. And, you know, you're packaging this up so that when you get that green light, you're ready to go. And in even better than when you were, you know, two months ago or whenever this thing got halted for us. So that's my advice to you guys. That's awesome. And are you holding any more supplemental tryouts or anything for your – or Fusion or Team 21 at this point? I can send out some. I mean, team, yeah, for sure. Team 21 won't be until uh, probably late fall when we can get into the Wings Training Center. But, uh, you know, Fusion definitely, once we get the green light uh, going into the fall, we'll definitely have uh, um, an opportunity there. But, you know, it's so, you know, I'll let you know because it's just, it's up in the air right now. U.S. Across just sent out their protocol. I don't know if you saw that. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're holding a call, I guess, on June 1st, but yeah. Yeah, so yeah. when we know that better, we'll be able to, you know, put something together. And, you know, I'm I, I'm passionate. Obviously, you heard how much coaching I do in my life. Like, I love coaching. I miss it, you know. I want to be back out with the guys. So as soon as we can do that safely and, you know, by, you know, protocol as outlined by the smart people in this world, then, you know, we'll do that. But well, Thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. Um, We'll share all your information with these guys because I know some of these guys are looking for some club opportunities. Cool. And we keep expressing to these guys, they have no idea what these rare opportunities are to talk with guys like you because nor or, under normal circumstances, you don't have the time to do this. You'd be, you'd be training or playing right now. So, guys, soak this in. Um, huge thanks from all of us. Uh, your time is valuable, and we really, really appreciate it, Coach. Of course. Good luck to you guys. Now, the rest Thanks, of the players, guys. you guys are going to stay on the call for a couple minutes after uh, Coach bails out. But thanks a lot, man, and we'll talk soon, and I, I owe you. Yeah, I'll see you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Coach. Take care. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. So that was that was pretty freaking amazing, wasn't it, guys? I mean, that's just special. You guys have no idea. There, years from now – you're going to sit there and think about the fact that you sat and we, we had a quarantine and we missed a season. But you had the opportunity to talk to the best of the best in the lacrosse world for the last few weeks. And um, not a, there's not another team at SPYA, nor do I think there's another rec team around. That's doing what we're doing. A lot of the clubs are doing this stuff, but nobody is. And, and, Honestly, guys, that says so much about you and how much we care about you because these, these guys, we had to get all kinds of clearances from the wings and stuff just to talk to some of these guys. So soak that up. I'll send you guys a video so you can share it with your family and watch it again in years to come. All the advice we've gotten has been tremendous. Um, Kevin, I know you want to talk to these guys, but, you know, you're the head coach. We'll let you wrap them up, right? Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, again, you know, huge credit to, to Rob again for helping set this up with Kevin today. You know, both Rob and I know Kevin, but obviously Rob knows a little bit better than I do, um, you know, from his affiliation with the Wings and so forth. But, uh, but guys, you know, just to reiterate, we've had some great experiences. We've tried to make the best of a difficult situation over the course of the last couple of months. I know it's been difficult for everybody. We'd rather be off the fields. Uh, but that time is coming. And uh, so hopefully, you know, 
uh, if you guys aren't on a summer club team, hopefully you're, you're starting to do some research and trying to find a summer club team. Because when the season does start up, which will likely be in the early part of July for most teams, uh, you guys should be hitting the field and getting yourselves ready for, uh, for next year. Uh, this will be uh, the last call. I, I kind of, you know, Rob and I had some exchanges about this, uh, this before. You know, we do have some guys that we could bring in, but, but I know we've been saying since the very beginning that we're going to end at the end of, uh, end of May. And I know we have a lot of other things going on in our lives that, uh, that we want to make sure we give you guys an opportunity to take advantage of. So with that, guys, it's been great being, you know, affiliated with you guys. You guys are family. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best this summer. Oh, oh, here, I wish you absolutely nothing but the best this summer, you know, as well as uh, next fall, as, uh, as things you know, start to materialize, we get a better idea of what's going to happen, you know, athletically and academically. But, uh, but all the best to you and yours, guys. If you need anything, the coaches here are certainly here to support you. So if you have any questions about drills, workout routines, clubs, things of that nature, don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, again, we're here to help. So with that, you know, Rob, Chris, Kenrick, uh, you guys have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up today's call? Go ahead, Kenrick. I would just say uh, keep working hard, you know, grind it out. It's like uh, everybody's been saying, we have an, an excellent opportunity here to uh, make ourselves better, you know. So work on all aspects of yourself, whether it be um, nutrition, getting faster, getting stronger. You always make yourself very balanced and, and a well-rounded athlete. So like Coach said as well, ask questions. Use us as resources. We're always here for you guys. Um, keep working hard, and hopefully we'll see you guys out there on the field pretty soon. Awesome. Coach Chris, before I hey sign guys. off. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, I, I know we the main topics of everything we've got going on on these Zooms is lacrosse, the sport of lacrosse. But right now what we've got right here is so much more than that. Okay, I think all the coaches had touched on the fact that, you know, there's not many guys doing this out here. There's not many teams doing what we're doing. And great, we, we've been talking about lacrosse and everything, but right now, take a look at this screen of this lacrosse family we got right here. Okay, this is our normal right now. This is what brings us back to center and finds a little bit of normal in what's going on right now. So I just want to say, guys, have a great summer. Whatever t club team you're playing for, play strong, play hard, okay? Play like Parkland lacrosse plays. All right, guys, be safe. Finish out the school year strong. And above all, boys, take care of your families, okay? I miss you guys. I love you guys. And I will see you soon. Awesome. So, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here with just a couple words. So, this week, you guys have been on my mind. I mean, you've been on my mind the whole time. But this week especially. So, Tuesday night, we should have been playing in the first round of the playoffs. Right now, instead of doing a Zoom call with Kevin Crowley, we should have been rolling over some team in a semifinal game. And this Saturday morning, when you wake up and the sun is shining, I want you to go outside and pick up a lacrosse stick. And I want you to visualize a championship game that we should be playing in this Saturday. Soak that in, guys. Visualize it. Whether we get to play that game or not, you guys are all champions to me. And I know that there are many, many more victories coming your way. Take in this time and relish this time. I know personally I've had more sit-down dinners with my family in the last 10 weeks than I've had in my entire life. Appreciate this family time that you have right now, guys. Because when the world gets back to full speed, you're going to be off and racing and running. Soak this up. Good luck, guys. Go Trojans. I miss you and I love you. All the best, guys. Take care. See you guys. Have a good Bye. night. Thank right. you. Be safe. Thank you.